In this video we are going to talk about the ABV stock. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. As the youngest of the pharma juggernauts, ABVI, NYSE, ABV, is an exciting company because of its impressive size and lineup of popular pharmaceutical and biological products. Since its spin-off from Abbott Laboratories, NYSE, APT, in 2013, ABVI has built an attractive portfolio of drugs while exploring promising programs in oncology, immunology, neuroscience, and more. ABVI is also attractive to investors thanks to its profitability, consistently growing revenues, and a meaty trailing dividend yield of 5.1%. But there are two issues which should give potential investors pause. First, ABV's $63 billion acquisition of Allergen was finalized in May, but the deal's impact on ABV's bottom line is far from clear. Second, there is the key question of how the company will replace flagging revenues from its best-selling drug Humira, which has faced increasing competition from biosimilar products since its patent protections expired in 2016. This question is of immediate concern to the company, as its international revenues from sales of the drug collapsed by 19.9% in the second quarter compared to 2019 on top of more modest declines in 2018. In my view, the allergen deal will be instrumental in addressing ABV's challenges with Humira. Let's investigate in closer detail how the merger could save ABV's day. Allergen is already boosting ABV's revenues. Before being acquired, Allergen produced profitable drugs like Botox as well as eye care and women's health products. ABVI expects to make a total of $48 billion in total revenue this year, including sales from its new Allergen products. Of this $48 billion, the company expects that sales from its blockbuster biologic, Humira, will account for approximately 40%, which works out to be $19.2 billion, or around $4.8 billion per quarter. This is a drop from Humira's peak sales in 2018, when it brought in just over $19.9 billion over the entire year. Humira's competitors include the likes of Infliximab, produced by Johnson & Johnson, NYSE, JNJ, which is by far the world's largest pharma and medical device company. But the real culprit for declining revenues is a bevy of off-patent biosimilars which undercut its price. From 2021 to 2026, Humira's revenues will shrink with a compound annual growth rate CAGR, of negative 12.5%, according to Market Insight reports. How realistic is it for allergen sales to make up for Humira's decline? As it turns out, it's quite possible. According to ABV's second quarter earnings report, Allergen's portfolio brought in roughly $1.73 billion. This number is deceptively low, however, as the Allergen deal closed on May 8 and the quarter ended on June 30. In other words, Allergen's revenues are only reflected for about half of the quarter. If we double the $1.76 billion to estimate for a full quarter, ABVI would be earning about $3.52 billion from Allergen. We'll need to wait for the third quarter earnings report in late October to evaluate Allergen products' revenue contributions over a full quarter. Still, this sneak peek is very encouraging, because it suggests that a full quarter of Allergen product constitutes a substantial percentage of Humira's sales right out of the gate. ABV's pipeline will make 2021 exciting for investors. Given that ABVI is actively developing a plethora of new drugs while continuing development of Allergen's products, other streams of income will soon start to trickle in to make up for Humira's tapering. Since the company's last earnings report, Allergen received regulatory approval for a new indication of its Juvederm gel implant for aesthetic enhancement of facial tissue, so its sales should soon grow beyond the $113 million reported in the second half of the second quarter. ABVI is hoping to receive regulatory approval for several new indications for its already approved products over the next year. In particular, ABVI submitted the regulatory paperwork for three new indications for its arthritis therapeutic, Rinvoke, with the goal of offering the drug to a wider set of arthritis patients. The company is also seeking two approvals for a pair of new therapies created from a combination of its oncology drugs, Imbruvica and Venclexta. One of the regulatory submissions pertains to using the combination for mantle cell lymphoma, MCL, while the other aims to treat chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CAE. Although it might take a few years for these projects to eclipse Humira's present-day revenues, they should help ensure that the company's future is stable. Exceeding Expectations 
AbbVie, along with other major pharmaceutical companies such as Bristol-Myers Squibb, Merck, and Pfizer, reported quarterly results recently, it stood out among its peers, beating analyst expectations. In its Q1 2021 earnings, reported April 30, AbbVie brought in $13.01 billion, growing its first quarter revenues 51% year-over-year. It also beat earnings per share EPS, estimates according to generally accepted accounting principles GAAP, by $0.52, cents, reporting quarterly GAAP EPS of $1.99. There was tremendous growth across many of ABV's business lines, mainly in its immunology and aesthetic segments. Revenue from the former came in at $5.7 billion, an increase of nearly 13% year-over-year. Sales from immunosuppressant Humira increased 3.5% to $4.86 billion, but the growth really came from its newer immunology products, Skyrezy and Rinvoke, which grew sales year-over-year by 91.1% and 600%, respectively. Another stunning growth figure came from the company's aesthetics portfolio, which was a part of ABV's allergen acquisition in 2019. Global revenue from that portfolio came in at $1.14 billion, an increase of nearly 35% year-over-year. The shining star in the aesthetics business is Botox, which increased sales by 45% year-over-year to $477 million in the first quarter of 2021. Finally, AbbVie was able to raise its financial guidance on its GAAP EPS from $6.69 to $7.27, and overall 2021 EPS from $12.32 to $12.37. Its best-selling drug, Humira, already went off patent in Europe in 2018 and will be going off patent here in the US in 2023. But in this earnings report, AbbVie has proven it can grow the other parts of its business and diversify away from Humira. Pipeline Growth AbbVie has been busy strengthening its pipeline to offset the loss of revenue when Humira does finally go off patent. It's been filing to test and apply new indications for some of its existing drugs, including Skyrezy, Rinvoke, Imbruvica, for lymphoma, and Venclexta, for leukemia. So far, it has filed for more than 20 different indications at the Phase 3 registration stage across these four drugs. This would mean a lot more possibilities for these drugs to treat a range of diseases and increase sales for the company. The company has at least 70 additional filings across all three phases, spread out among its immunology, oncology, neuroscience, and eye care business lines. In addition to extensive in-house work on the pipeline, AbbVie is also looking at growing the business through acquisitions. Just a few weeks back, it reached a deal to possibly acquire biotech company Mitokinin through an option agreement, in which a contract is made between a buyer and seller for the former to possibly buy the business later at a predetermined price. Mitokinin has developed a technology to increase the activity of the PINK1 compound, which is heavily linked to Parkinson's disease. Increasing the activity of the PINK1 compound increases overall brain activity and synaptic function, thus lowering the risk for developing a disease like Parkinson's. The company has a neurodegenerative disease pipeline of products to treat this disease. AbbVie purchased an option to buy the company if it completes the study of its lead PINK1 compound. Analysts estimate the Parkinson's disease market could reach $5.69 billion by 2022, and the possible addition of mitokinin to ABV's portfolio could help drive future growth for the pharmaceutical giant. ABV's efforts to diversify its current products as well as expand its pipeline to new areas should provide optimism to investors. Expanding the portfolio beyond Humira will drive growth in the near and long term. Still a great buy. ABVI has rallied very strongly over the past 12 months, and it's up nearly 40% from the lows we saw near the end of October 2020. I believe this is mainly thanks to investors buying back the stock upon the realization that the patent cliff fears on Humira were overblown. Despite some bad press around Humira's patent status, ABV's revenue has continued to grow over the past few years, with an average of 13.1% annualized revenue growth over that time and no signs of slowing down. Shares are currently priced at about $117, and I believe this stock can still go a lot higher. It was trading at a forward price to earnings P -E, ratio of 10.4 just a few months back, and that metric is currently has come down to just 9.3, meaning that the price of the stock has gotten cheaper in relation to earnings. 
If the stock reverted back to a 10.4 forward P.E. ratio, putting it back in line with its historical averages, and we take the earnings per share estimates for the next fiscal year at $13.83, we are looking at a $143 share price. Thus, buying ABVI stock right now would give investors a nearly 25% upside. ABVI also boasts a very attractive dividend of 4.25%, much higher than the S&P 500's average of about 2%, and the company has been increasing that dividend at an average rate of almost 19% over the past five years. All of this together makes ABVI one of the best deals on Wall Street, and after a quarter that exceeded a lot of expectations, it's a stock that looks like a buy. What are your thoughts on our video? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear from me again, please subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thank you for watching us.